So when you go to remove these retainers on these switches, they have little spaces on it right here, but they make a tool for this. And so you just simply put it down over it. I'm sure I can make it work one hand. And then this one takes an 11 16 wrench. Just turn it off like so so you know, there's not necessary to take a screwdriver or something and beat on these things that's not the way it works so if you're going to be doing any kind of work on these it's well worth your money to pick one of these up and they also make one for the ignition switch which I don't happen to have so I'm going to have to go ahead and store that and get that out of there so um, this is I know this works on this one and it works on the ones, the ones in the Valiant out there. And I'm going to assume it's going to work on the Scamp. So, you know, it just takes, I think just takes about one of these. Because Chrysler wasn't going to go through all that mess with trying to have different sizes. So it should be usable through all the car lines, I would think. So that's how you handle these. Okay, so I have this dashboard almost entirely depopulated and it needs a lot of work it's not damaged i'm not going to have to do any metal repair in that regard but it's it's definitely filthy and dirty and surface rust did you see here when the mice and things like that when they start going to the bathroom someplace they keep on coming back to it to go to the bathroom so that's what they did here so you can tell they were taking a piss on this and it's I've got to work and get those clips out of there that hold the dash cluster in. May replace those actually. They're in kind of rough shape. These these don't come out. They're weld tack welded in. <clears throat> got one more clip over here. I have to take out. It's in pretty good shape. But uh, <clears throat> the top of the dashboard is in good condition. But right here, you can see it really, uh, it really got, must have been another bathroom area. So this is a pristine dash pad that was on it. I couldn't believe that. Usually this, this thing is a steady in contrast between that Plymouth out there because the Plymouth didn't have the rodent incursions in it, but it, it had just been out in the sun all its life and just everything in it was just baked. So this car obviously stayed most of its life indoors when it wasn't being used. So the dash pads survived because they're expensive. You get an actual pad. I got a cover on the other car, which wasn't cheap itself. But on the back, you see <clears throat> this is metal under here. It's got a metal frame. I was telling somebody, I said, I don't think they make these anymore out of metal. Because they they're always advertising for the cores. And I have one or two cores, actually. Maybe when they want to give me enough money, I'll part with them. But it's got RGS marked on it. And then it's like the date stamp, 304 of 8. That's 68. This car was built. Oh, when was this car produced? This car was built right around the very, very end of November of 68, I believe. Under here, you can see I've taken off these pads and made some marks. So when I get new ones, I'll know which way to put them in. I took pictures anyway, but but everything in there was in good shape. The speaker I got worried there because the speaker looked fine on the bottom, and then I went up to the top here and looked at it, and I thought, uh oh. But actually, what this is, this is just a cover dust cover I guess but the cone is in excellent condition so it's just some kind of paper so I'll uh, I'm sure it's easily available and this comes off with screws so I'll take that off and clean that up and fix that guess what it's raining again ashtray looks like it had never been used some fuses and some tin foil there's a cover for the uh, holder for the ashtray. I 
And all the switches are original. This is the uh, wiper switch. And it has a 281, 2818 date code, which is 281st day of 68. The flasher switch has a date code of 291 and 68, I believe that is. Yeah, 219, 2198, 219th day of 68. Headlight switch. I guess that's probably 448. That's probably, that was made a lot earlier than in the year. They must have been stocking up on headlight switches. Anyway, it's going to need a little bit of work. It's a little pretty in there. This is a latch for the glove box. You can see what kind of number they did on that. <laughs> and the defroster grills, these were baked apart on the other car. The five on this one, I marked them where they go. Left, right. And one good thing too, a very good thing is these defroster duct hoses survived mm -hmm. And I don't know if they make these like this anymore. They probably do, but I wanted to keep them original if I could. They're dirty inside, but this one has an unusual end on it. I've never seen that. That goes into the duct on the here box. That's another project in and of itself right there. I got that thing out. I think that thing's put together in two pieces, as a matter of fact. But boy, that's going to be fun dealing with that one. All right, well, I want to get a. Uh, a uh, well, that's the way it's not raining. I'm going to start cleaning this stuff up and get it stored away inside someplace where it stays safe while I'm working on the rest of all this. So that's, that goes to the wiper switch. The little thing fell out of here. The little, it's supposed to have a little piece of metal in there in that slot, and that kind of, it's like spring metal. Kind of holds it in there. But anyway, that's what we got here with this. So, uh... I have to go out of town again this week. Duty calls again, so I've got to stop now and go get ready to go and get some parts ordered. I'm guess I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, now I'm turning the camera off. The rain quit. I think I'm gonna go ahead and order all that insulation and get the dash behind the dash all squared away and just concentrate on all this first, because then that way we can get the dash put back in and get the engine connected and hopefully all right guys that's enough for this one i think i'm gonna let you go so i'll see you later thanks for watching so another thing i'm going to work on and recondition is this grill guard whatever you want to call this i guess it's really it's a mounting plate the mounts on the speaker and the dash speaker and this is the side here the flat i guess you call it the flat side that goes against the speaker itself and then there's four bolts that hold it to this and then this goes it's got a faster on each end of it that fastens it up to the bottom of the upper dash under the grill and this made into the dash and so their idea to seal this thing, to keep, just basically just to keep it from rattling, was to put these globs of sealer around here. Butyl, I guess it is. And uh, it was all right, I guess. I guess it did the job, but they didn't really, they didn't really, as a surprise to everybody, they didn't really do a very good job of it because you can see that the middle part didn't really get enough little bits on the ends a lot of it's falling off so I'm just gonna go ahead and just redo that and do it better. I've carefully cleaned and replicated the careful job that Mopar did with this this insulating sound deadening stuff here. And this is probably more than they put on there, I'm sure it is, but I wanted to actually do a better job of it. So I just had some of this uh seam sealer. 
on hand using up the last of it and uh, the kind that you pull this you know, off in the strip so I just rolled it up in just random size little balls and stuck it on there and I've uh, got any scale or loose kind of paint or anything like that off of here so now all I'm gonna do is just get my cheap can of rattle can paint and douse it down with paint and you will never know that Chrysler didn't do it maybe so next up I'm refurbishing the speaker a little bit and it was in pretty good shape I had to do a little bit of repair to it which I'll show you here coming up but it's drying right now so as soon as it gets done with that I'll be able to kind of flip it over but one thing is this uh, protective cloth had to be remade so I just I have a roll of this this is actually garden fabric and I've put the roll up already but I cut off some that had gotten had been sitting out in the shed back there and so it got a little bit dirty and wasn't able to be used for anything real nice so I did go ahead and just do an outline here with my little white paint marker and now I'm going to cut that out and I'll glue that on and everybody will be happy. I did check to see if it will pass sound by scientifically testing it, which meant I held it up in front of the speaker to the radio with the radio playing and I could still hear the radio station, which depending on what you think of that radio station is either a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, anyway, it should work. So I'm going to cut that out and proceed on with that and then we're going to have to rehab that fan there a little bit it does work I think it works I've never tested that I need to test that it's good so here's the repairs I had to make on this speaker it's a little bit dried out so it had some little minor splits in the cone and then it had a this was kind of delaminating, I guess, whatever they used to seal that. So I just resealed that. I used um, Permatex, the flexible Permatex. I know it's probably not what you're supposed to use, but I'm supposed to use some kind of rubber sealant, rubber glue, rubber cement, something. But I don't have any of that, so I'm not going to order it for this. So this is what it's going to get. So hopefully that should work a while longer. It's just an old speaker. Okay, I had to take another switch apart. This one's the uh, hazard switch for the dart. And it looks fine. But on the inside, it's a little bit, it was erratic. It worked just once in a blue moon when you tested it. And uh, so you can see it's just kind of discolored. That's just got a little slide in here over a spring. And it just slides back and forth in there. And as it slides, this thing slides back and forth. It makes contact between different terminals here. So that's how that works. And it's a little bit discolored here. So just a little cleanup will help this tremendously. We'll get it back together. Should work fine. <laughs> Okay, got the terminals all cleaned up, brightened up, didn't go too crazy with that. A little smidge of dielectric grease around it. That was cleaned up. Put it all back together, should work fine. I think that was uh, dried out grease on that more than anything. It didn't look burned. Just looked like some kind of maybe real old 50 year old dielectric grease turned to some kind of coating on it that prevented it from working very well. I got my meter set on. Uh, continuity so kind of hooked up let's try this out come on come on get on in there all right so we'll swap terminals to the rear Excellent. Okay, I'll try to turn it off again one hand and this is not easy. <laughs> so there you go. 
it's not hard to fix this stuff at all. These switches all come apart. So if you have one that's malfunctioning, don't throw it away, especially if it's the original to the car, which this one is. I was looking at the date code, sorry. It's right there, 219 of 8. That car was built, um, that car was built the 29th, or scheduled to be built the 29th of October of 68. So there, this is a ways back in the fall, but there's some of the stuff was had date codes on it that was just right up there. This one is 281 of 8, it's right there my thumbnail that has paint on it and this one was actually this is the 44th week of eight that's what that is mopar so i'm just kind of cleaning this headlight switch up and stuff too get it all shined up so it'll work should be good so that's how you do it get them going again i'm pretty sure that this is also needs to be done in the Plymouth out there, and I'm neglected to do that because it doesn't work. So, but anyway, there you go. Okay, so I'm done with this dash frame, and uh, it wasn't as easy as I was hoping it would be. I had some minor issues with some sanding marks, and where the paint tried to kick a time or two. It's actually just one place on the paint. It was over here. I don't know why they did that, but uh, it. I put a couple of coats on and then when I went to put the third coat on, it reacted over here to something and so I don't know why that was. So I let it dry and then sanded it back down and treated it again and it, it was okay the, the third time around, so or fourth time, I guess it would be the fourth time was the charm. So everything turned out pretty good on it. I'm pretty satisfied with it. I use this uh SEM paint and I like it pretty well I honestly don't know that it's any better than anything else I've had just as good luck with uh, Blitz Black John Deere Blitz Black and pretty much any other kind of paint like this but it should be fine I think it looks good on there uh, i did have a problem i've been i was warned about that looking on the internet um i had some issues with this thing splattering and fortunately it did it or it did it you really can't even see it now i think i fixed it but uh it splattered right through here and even if i hadn't fixed it this is going to be hidden under a panel so it's no problem there so this thing is in pretty decent shape. It, it had some, some pits and stuff in it that I just didn't bother to get out of it. So it's not perfect, but it's fine for me. It's much, <laughs> it's much better than it was. So now comes the fun part of putting all this back together and get them populate this dashboard. So that's always fun because you see it all come together, all the fruits of your labor. And I did finish this speaker it's ready to go back in that was that's a cheap repair on that i just used stuff that i had laying around like again that's that's actually garden fabric a real light kind of like garden fabric and so that's what i tend to do this is not a high this is not a high dollar thing here so i have to use up i try to use up 
scraps of paint and materials and things like that. And over there you can see I've got the glove box and parts of the fan. I think I have the fan hanging up motor hanging over there too. So <laughs> a lot of stuff put back together. So I'm going to start tinkering with that. I've got a box out here I think is my... I think is either one of two things. It's either my firewall insulation kit or it's the the kit for that headlight. Uh, headlight. I was looking at that over there. The heater box. So this, uh, once I get this thing as far along as I want to have it before I put it in the car, uh, I'm going to move it somewhere else out of the way because that heater box is the next project. So, and I was watching old car Alley's videos and I was looking back at the one where he was putting his dash in the fiasco. And he mentioned something to me that reminded me of what I'm probably going to get into. And that is that this thing gains weight once you put all this stuff on it. But the way this works is, I guess it's the way they did it at the factory. They probably did not have the steering column in here. And I'm not taking the steering column out of here under any circumstances. Because I don't like doing that. Uh, it's got a slip joint up here and all that. I don't want to deal with it. I'm not going to. But over there where that yellow wire is going in, that little hole over there, there's a bolt that goes in there and there's one matches it over here. And I guess the philosophy is just that you get the dash in here, weasel it in here, and then you just can sit it on that, those pair of bolts, the bottom of the dash frame right here. I've already pointed that out, I'm sure. And then you can work behind it and then just pivot the thing up so anyway we'll see how that goes and maybe i may i may have my own version of a fiasco here but i'm going to try not to but anyway so that's it on the dash i think i'm going to wrap this video up here and we'll do another one on another project i've got to do some more garage cleaning i've been throwing stuff in the floor and all that so okay I think that's it. So I'll bid you farewell until the next one. So, yep, bang, bang, bang. See you then. All right, all right. How's everybody doing? So have a nice warm evening. Here in the south, man, I mean, the weather changes from one season to the other almost virtually overnight. So we had snow on the ground and ice and all that about three weeks ago when it was 19 degrees. And all that good stuff. And now it's about 65 degrees in the evening. It was 70 something today. So you never know. But it's the way it is. I've lived here all my life, so I am used to it. Sorry for the shaky cam. I'm pulling my sleeves up. So uh, before we get started, I always kind of get tickled. I watch Old Car Alley. It's one of my favorite channels. That's Howard up there in Michigan. And I always kind of giggle a little bit because when Howard's doing videos, you always notice he's got some cuts and stuff on his arm and his hands. And it makes me, like I said, it makes me kind of giggle a little bit because it reminds me, if you ever seen the, that show, WKRP in Cincinnati, one of the running gags of that show was that the guy that his name was Les Nessman, he always had some sort of injury. Like in every episode, he had like a Band-Aid on something or he had a bandage like on his forehead or his arm or something. So he was always injured in every episode. So kind of that's kind of what I thought of that. And I'd see Howard's hands there, you know, kind of gouged or whatever. But uh, I've been working under the dash about 15 minutes, and I've already marked my hands up too. So it's easy to do on these because there's so much metal. Anyway, I have my characteristic messy workbench with a lot of stuff going on here there's parts that looks like something exploded on here but what's going on is i'm in the middle of doing the uh well, not really in the middle of it but i'm about to start on one little project and then immediately followed by another one and they're sort of going to run consecutively but what we're going to do is we're going to work on that air conditioning box that's over there in the corner sitting there waiting to be cleaned up is very dirty and very messy so i'm going to do that outside get that cleaned up outside so i don't have to breathe all that but in the meantime in the interim if you will i'm going to replace the insulation that's on the firewall of the car and there's just about four big pieces of it and there's also going to be a piece that goes between the rear of the 
heater and air conditioning box to the firewall, but it actually mounts to the heat and air conditioning box. But uh, anyway, I got these from a place up in Michigan that I use a whole lot for stuff like this. It's called uh, DMT, which is Detroit Muscle Technologies, and they make or have made a lot of this uh, in this type of stuff. Any kind of like foam or gaskets or insulation or padding or anything like that, they make a whole lot of that. This gentleman, I guess, is just ded dedicated to his career to that, and he does a very good job at it. You can see we have the originals here that I have marked. I made some um, little marks on so I know how to, you know, it's not rocket science, but I just wanted to know how they went, and you can see that's my bag of rags there. You can see some different things I've made marks on those, and then this is the one that goes, this is one of the ones that goes up in the far left and right corners of the under the dashboard sides. It says here, if you can read that, it says left uh, upper cowl, and this says out, which means that the insulation parts, which may or may not be asbestos, uh, goes out towards the metal of the car. So I actually have all those, and I had put a couple of them I had put away over here. I just kind of put to the side because I had, didn't need them yet, but uh, I'm thinking that that is something that is probably not, they don't make that material anymore. It's probably like so, so, some sort of asbestos um, in it because I noticed when I order all this stuff that it comes with, it's very similar, but it's not the same material as what it was, this, tar, this board stuff. It's not as thick. And it's not the same material, but that's okay. I don't want to breathe in any carcinogens. So anyway, that's over there. I'll straighten that up in a minute, of course. But So I've got all that to replace that, and that's what I'm going to do probably, I'd say, tomorrow because I've already... Let's walk around the back. I've already painted the firewall. I may have showed that in another video, I don't remember. I did that, I cleaned up all the wiring and cleaned up. I still gotta clean the steering column up, but anyway, sort of replicated that coating of red oxide primer. I got the holes blocked off, of course, and I pulled out all the insulation. I'm still gonna clean that some more. Pulled out the wiper pivots. I gotta order the kit for those. And I think I've also got to order a seal for that. It goes between the steering column base and the uh, firewall that looks pretty deteriorated. So anyway, I'm getting along with that. So this car has, um, it's got these ventilation plenums. Some people mistakenly call pleniums, but you're looking at this air conditioning box and just imagine this is the this is the side that goes towards the firewall, and then at the far right side, there's a fresh air intake with a gasket around it, and it's got a door that opens up. And then there's also one that's not connected to that. There was one that goes here, but it had to come out because not only is there an insulation piece behind there that wouldn't, there's no way to get to that except to pull it out but I don't know what's up in there. It looks a little, a little crusty up in there. <clears throat> so I wanna kinda clean that out and maybe rust treat it and stuff. Anyway, turn it back on. So that's part of it. Also, another part of it is that this thing has got a couple issues. The first one is that it's filthy. It's got crap on the top of it. I don't know what that is. You look in it, it has a bunch of debris. So it's just, it had to be cleaned up. You can't do that very well in the car. And the other part of it is that this door here is frozen up. And it's just riveted to this, this is, I think this side is plastic, but it's not very thick plastic whatsoever. And the other one is 
the other the heater box is probably for like all the other ones I've ever messed with are fiberglass. So when these things lock up and you try to push, you try to pull this door open, it either snaps the hinges or it breaks it out of the the plenum here. So we can't have that whatsoever. So I soaked it a little bit before I took it out and it did not improve it. So I'm going to have to go ahead and. Uh, do better <laughs> that's about all I can tell you but those don't come apart you can't get them they're they're made to press together so in other words so anyway I'll deal with that and of course it needs to be repainted all that you ever notice how many times people point in videos and slap things and <laughs> anyway so that's going to be what I'm going to work on also and then uh, I'm going to put that insulation in. We'll start on the heater box. And it's basically, it all has to go in order. So the wiper arrangement has to be fixed and put back in. And then the insulation has to be put in. One of those two interchangeably at the same time. First, first or second, doesn't matter. And then the heat and air conditioning box has to go in. And then the dash can go in. All right. So something funny happened. I didn't think it was too funny, but I was glad to see it here. So I had this box, that box over there, that was where this stuff was. And I had forgotten that I had ordered um, the insulation for the firewall and the rebuild kit for the resealing and re-foaming and all that kit for the heater box from the same place. I forgot that. Well, I kept, I got this a few days ago in the box there and I never did open it up. I just, well I did, I peeked in and I saw this stuff. I'm like, okay, there's my insulation. Well, turned out <clears throat> they packed it together. So the, <laughs> the air conditioning kit, which is extensive and it was not cheap either. It's even got the O-rings for the air conditioning in there. Um, it was in there with it. So the air conditioning kit I was looking for was already here. <laughs> I've had to, man, I've had to just be so careful about that. I have either lost stuff after it came here. I don't know where I put it. Lost a few things or didn't pay attention. I've just, oh. <laughs> so anyway. Okay, well, I don't know what else I'm going to do this evening. It's getting on up in the evening a little bit. I kind of hate to even go in, man. It's so nice out here. But it's going to be up in the 70s the rest of the week, through the weekend. So. I'm considering, I'm considering firing the old Chev up out there on Saturday morning and going back to the junkyard. I've been thinking about that where I was at last time. And I always re mentally reviewed my, what I saw there. And I realized there were some, some uh, pickings there that I had left behind. So this time I think I'm going to go back more prepared with my tools and things and see if I can snag the very last of the last and uh, all that. So I hear a train coming, so I'm gonna do a little bit more this evening and call it a night and I'm glad to see this stuff here because that should keep me occupied for quite a while. I also do have the blanket, insulation blanket that goes across the, it's across, not across, across the bottom of the cowl up there where the wiper pivots go I have all that and if you ever consider whether to fool one of these cars you know somebody was thinking that you can't get parts for these they're expensive they're not really there's a lot of stuff that's reproduced for these cars now so don't hesitate to if you're thinking about buying one of these if you can find one that's in good shape jump on it man go for it i enjoy it learn a lot about cars without you know getting something that's impossible to work on okay guys i'm gonna wrap it so i'll go ahead and put this up for you this evening i do believe so thanks for watching and we'll see you on another one okay so i've put the dash itself aside for now i've went about as far as i can with that till i do more with some painting on the trim which i don't want to get into quite yet so in the meantime um i'm putting this clean this ventilator back up and painted it and all that so it looks very nice now the door works got that going again so it didn't break itself out of the plastic 
This this one is this thing is plastic, and the the one that's mounted on the heater box, the air conditioning box, is in fiberglass. So either way, you have to be very careful with these things. They're not if the door's jammed up, you gotta get it unjammed somehow without breaking it. So what I'm working on now is I'm getting ready to put this back in. So I had a couple seals to put on it. One is the top seal here, which is here fits over this this goes between this ventilator and the car in there the cowl the opening there which is flat this thing is supposed to be flat and you can look at it and see it's not flat not anymore it's not it might not have ever been flat but uh, either way this thing should work but it, the holes here which are probably the right size this guy makes good stuff um, some of these are so much casting flash right here where the screw holes go, the bolts go through that it won't fit down flush. That probably wasn't an issue in 1968, but it is now. So I'm going to clean these up and get them where they'll fit correctly. And um, I went looking for the foam that goes inside this door here. I don't know how many people actually remember that there's supposed to be a big piece of foam glued in here, but there's, most of them are gone. This one's gone. The one on the Plymouth out there was gone, so uh, I was all ready to go with that and put that on. I was looking through my kit, and I realized it wasn't in the air conditioning box kit. And it wasn't ever going to be in the air conditioning box kit because this is just kits just for the air conditioning box, which only has the passenger side ventilator door. So this thing, I have to go order this, I guess, but that's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, so I'm not held up with that. Um... Because I, I want to get that just moved along. So we'll get that in stock when it comes in and glue it on. It just take some kind of spray adhesive. I've, I've got some. It's over there. Don't mind my messy desk again. Or workbench rather. <laughs> it's like a desk. But I went looking for 3M77. Home Depot didn't have 3M77. It's like every time I ever go anywhere to buy something around here. I go there, I go to the place where it's at, I go to the, the aisle it's on, I go to the slot where it's supposed to be, and there's nothing but a price tag and a big empty hole there. They're always out of everything right here. Huntsville is, has to be the out-of-stock capital of the world. Now, I understand we're in the middle of a pandemic, or hopefully close to the end of, of it, but again, I don't believe that spray adhesive is involved in that. Maybe it is. I don't know. So anyway, I got the 90. I'll use it. It'll be fine. No big deal. So move on from that. But uh, anyway, and this foam thing that I'm going to have to get, if they make it, I'm sure they do, it's probably going to cost me about $3 for the piece itself and about $10 or $12 for shipping. I can't believe how much shipping has went up lately. But hey, you know what? If I don't want to pay for it, then I don't need to be in this hobby to... But, Anyway, and I want to note something about this. There's a couple reasons I'm doing this. Some people may question me why. Well, there's a few reasons. The, number one, the very first reason, the very most important reason is I want to. I like doing this sort of stuff. I like learning how to do it. The second reason is I wanted to save this car. And the third reason is, is that the more of these I do, where it's not a big deal if I screw something up or have to redo it or don't do it, exactly right the better I will be at this hopefully when I get to the car out there that I don't want to screw anything up on which is the scamp which I still have that somebody asked about it yes I have that car so it needs all this done so it's good practice for me to do it on these two cars I think the job that I'm doing on this car is better than the one I did on the Plymouth the Valiant which I didn't do a bad job on it but you know I've learned from it and this one so I think this car will be even better, and then I think the scamp will be even better because I plan on the scamp being top notch. So anyway, okay, guys. Well, let me go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll get this ventilator on, and then I got to put that big jute pad, jute jute jute, <laughs> that big jute pad that runs across the across across across, not across across. The cow there I have to glue that in and some other stuff but anyway I know you just want to see it when I'm done with it you don't want to you want the 
You want the baby, not the labor. So I'll show you when it's all done. Like the surface of the moon, isn't it? All right, well, I've got this on here, and I glued mine on because I care. Chrysler originally didn't glue it on because they didn't care. They just threw them on there, and here's a perfect example why that was a bad idea. This is the seal that goes on the other end over there on the right side passenger ventilator. It's not called a ventilator, but the ventilation plenum. And it's part of their box, their conditioning box. And you can see this is the, I think this is either the top of the bottom. I think that's the bottom of it against the air conditioning box. Not sure, but either way, you can see that these hard workers up there got the thing misplaced. And it's been like that for 50 years. So the seal wasn't even in there the right way. So there you go. That's a good reason why Chrysler nearly went out of business. One of them. There's hard workers up there. You know, that makes me so mad because us, we Americans, we think that we, we do a worse job at some things, but we think we're worth more than anybody else. Even though, like I said just now, we do a worse job of it. And back then, that's that was inexcusable. You know, they sold a ton of these old cars, but the build quality is awful on them. And don't let anybody tell you differently. I don't care if it's a just a lowly old four-door dart like the commoners drove or 340 Duster or whatever, or a Chrysler 300. There's, the build quality was awful on them. So, anyway, the, probably the only car that they ever made that was in that era that was probably had decent build quality would be an Imperial. And please do not call it a Chrysler Imperial. It's not called a Chrysler Imperial. It's called just simply Imperial because. Chrysler Corporation's idea was to, it was a separate branding, okay, it was not Chrysler Imperial. I don't care how many times you call it that, it's not Chrysler Imperial. I had somebody on YouTube that I nicely corrected about three or four different times, and they persisted, they just couldn't quit saying that. Anyway, I'm going to quit saying it, and I'm going to go ahead and put this, I ought to call it a plenum. I heard somebody else call something else like this, called it a, not a plenum, they called it a, Plenium. You, you may have noticed that I'm real particular about grammar because that was my strong suit in school. I made excellent grades in English and grammar. And when I took my ACT, I just aced it for grammar. Didn't do too good in math because I didn't like math. But that the other parts I did great on. And so I, I don't, you know, if I misspell something, I want somebody to correct me or misuse of a word or something. I hope somebody corrects me, but uh, that's why I keep saying that. It's not a cross. It's a cross. A-C-R-O-S-S. -S -S. There is not an E-D on the end of it. There is not an E-T on the end of it. Never has been. Never has been. Every time you say that, and I hear a lot of people say that, you're saying it wrong. You're using a word that does not exist. Please stop doing that. It's a cross. Simply a cross. You're going to put something under the cow that's going to go across from one side to the other. Okay? All right. I'll quit yakking and get to work. Okay. I think that's going to do it for the firewall stuff. All the insulation's in. Everything's been painted. Got that. Uh, rag across the top there. That's put in with contact cement. You just coat both sides of what you want to join together with contact cement. I think I use weld wood. And let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes and it, you know it'll seem like it's going to dry out on you but it's not. So and then you just put the two whatever surfaces together <clears throat> and then those two end pieces with the yellow and this yellow one have to be cemented in place 
and I'm going to add some more sound in in here. That's for sure, because I don't get much. The carpet just kind of goes up. There's a piece that goes behind the air conditioner right there, but then the firewall area does not get much at all. So we'll work on that a little later. But for now, I think that's going to wrap it on this part of it. And done a lot of different things here to get this far with it. So now I have to lock in the battle with the air conditioning box. So that's what I'm going to go do. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.